introduce myself first. My name is Malcolm Rogan. I'm currently the chair of the patient participation group of the practice which organised this meeting. The reason I chose diabetes is, and you're aware of it, but it's a massive, massive uh, issue. Uh, it's been, I was brought up with it with all my training, but certainly over the last 10 to 15 years, it's gone. Through. It's just enormous, and, and it, that's now, and it's going to get bigger. <laughs> And the issue is that it will affect all our lives one way or the other, and things I'm going to talk about will, will make that clear. If somebody says diabetes to you, is the immediate thought, it's something to do with sugar. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. Um, and you think of it as a disease to do with sugar control. Yes. And you, you wouldn't be wrong, but actually, in, in terms of what diabetes is, uh, if I give you an example of what's the issue to do with sugar, how, how much impact that has on me and the patients usually to do with sugar. That's the amount of sugar and that's everything else. The figures. Uh, Ten years ago the figures for uh, diabetes uh, of any type in this country were about 2 million. In 10 years to now we were about 3.3 million. It's gone up approaching 60% in 10 years. It's felt that at the moment they're approaching, and again it's estimated, about one in three adults, if you look at the audience tonight, um, and I'm not going to ask people to put their hands up if they may be diabetic or not, but one in three adults are, have, and it's, there's arguments about whether we should use this, but it's an easy one to understand, one in three adults have what's called pre-diabetes. So one in three of the audience tonight, whether they know it or not, have a condition, unless something changes to alter that, have a very high likelihood of progressing into a diabetic state. And because it's, it's eminently, for the majority, a, a preventable condition. Breaking it down, type 1 is not uh, the various reasons why people type 1 is where you uh, unfortunately tends to develop fairly acutely and where people require insulin and will require insulin for the rest of their lives. Uh, there's not an issue there that that, 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 that was preventable. It's, it's, it can be that it's inherited. There are other various reasons why can have, people can have operations on their pancreas gland for a tumour or something like that. They become immediately um, an insulin dependent diabetic. So that group is not really what I want to talk about tonight because that, that, that group are going to happen, come what may, but they're a fairly standard group. You know, they're, they're, there isn't a massive increase of, of, of a problem that we're seeing in the other type, which is this type, which is called type 2. Type 2 diabetes is where the person does still have some insulin production, um, but for various reasons it is not sufficient, and with time, as time goes by, unless they change something, the situation gets worse, and the sugar control gets worse. That's type two, and that's what I'm really talking about tonight. And of the people that are type two, but the majority that we're talking about, let's say 80% around, are completely avoidable with type two. Completely avoidable. And that's, that's where what we should be trying to do is, is prevent it from happening. It's possible. The risks, one, overweight. The, with the overweight, it's the particular overweight, it's waist overweight. So we all carry some fat, we all must carry fat. It, it, girls uh, and guys who are being polled, um, <coughs> that's not helping either. So this isn't an issue of you mu everybody must be a being polled. We, we're all in, in our various levels of abnormality. We don't want to be very overweight and we don't want to be very thin. Very thin, I won't go into that tonight, carries health risks. But waist size, um, I won't ask what your waist sizes are, but we should be, we now know, looking at, uh, for guys, uh, 36 and below waist size. And the waist size, if you ever measure it, there's some, uh, I wouldn't say uh, <coughs> sexist, but individuals, when they take the waist around this sort of area, but then they lift up something that's above it, it's actually about midway. So it's not, you know, oh, I've got a 36 trouser, but in fact, if you went midway, it's about 42 or something like that. So it should be around your tummy bottom, and uh, for girls, it should be of the order of uh, around 31. Above that, we're running into problems, and for guys, about 36, 36 and a half, above that, we're running into problems. 
So it's, it's waist size is, is the, the area. So almost you can give up weighing ourselves, it's measure, measure our waist. Uh, we're all different sizes in the same way as I said, we're all, we're none of us normal. Uh, but that it's measuring the waist size, don't they almost give up the bit about weighing yourself. It's actually waist size, it's the principal thing. And the association of waist with cardiovascular disease, massive evidence to show that, same with type 2 uh, diabetes. The lack of activity. So we know there's an association uh, of that, irrespective of what our diet is. If we're not active, that affects us. I won't go into the pathophysiology of this, but because it's there. Um, but lack of activity does, does have a bearing. Family history. Um, there's, there's no doubt that genetically, um, that there, some people with diabetes, there's a higher incidence and, uh, uh, in family groups. So that one we can't get away from. Um, but potentially, it's avoidable still, if knowing that there may be a family history, you aspire to um, a correct waist size and keep active and do all those sort of things, then you can avoid having it. I'm going into the area which is the important area which takes up all our time now and is the big worry it's going to take up more and more of our time. It's not to do with the acute sugar control, that's easy. It's actually to do with the complications of having diabetes and that's the problem. So really diabetes and problems with sugar is a misnomer. It's a vascular disease, it's a blood vessel disease and everything to do with it's the big heavy cost area is to do with the blood vessels, if we use the term, getting furred up. The reason I'm going top to top to bottom is just to explain that. So dementia, one, certainly part of Alzheimer's is the most common one, but the issue of furred up arteries, um, atherosclerotic it's called, is, is very common as well, and often the two go together. Yeah, Alzheimer's isn't on its own. Number two is strokes, various types, mini strokes and so on, far higher in diabetes, all to do with furred up arteries. Uh, um, eyes, cataracts, more common with, 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 with diabetes, coming further down. Um, teeth, you know that, all problems that go with that. Um, the heart, heart disease, um, the abdomen, never had this before. It's all come in the last 10 years. If uh, the liver function tests, we know some of you may have had liver function tests, the, the incidence of liver function abnormalities now, um, a massive increase and every diabetic I see has got this problem. But another growing area, all because of diabetes, are um, amputations. Um, uh, it's gone up, it's, uh, five years ago it was about 6,000 6, a year, it's now about 7,000 a year of uh, amputations because of di associated with diabetes. Uh, neuropathy, that's where the nerves are damaged. Um, it's uh, a common accompaniment of diabetes. The issue is it's not something, some people it's because the sugar control isn't good enough, but we know it happens anyway, even with people, uh, this neuropathy is where the nerves are not working correctly. Uh, one area that gentlemen might be, uh, and sometimes I do suggest this to people who are in the pre-diabetic state, um, one thing we always check when somebody, a uh, gentleman might come in with what is termed erectile dysfunction, it's commonly associated with diabetes. It's, the, it's those complication areas. The commonest cause of, you will have heard of it, of um, renal dialysis and the need for transplants in this country, diabetes. So we've got the diabetic problem at the moment, but we've got a massive mushroom behind it that's waiting to come, where people are not aware they're on that, that tightrope, and they are. And the, and the problem, of course, is when you, when you haven't got a symptom, then it's easy to ignore. Nothing hurt, nothing's hurting, why, why try and fix it? And the problem is it's at the stage before you, what we want to do is fix it before you get to that stage where once you're there, you can't, you can't get back from it. I, I, I'll probably stop there with the diabetic one um, and the other things I, I could say. Um, you, you've gathered, my, my worry is that it's going to be a big cost to the nation, and it already is, but it's going to be an enormous cost over the next 10, 20 years. Um, and it's going to affect a lot and a lot of people uh, if potentially we're looking towards one in three of, of the population having diabetes, adult population. But it's also affecting children. Uh, and it's all to do with education. What would the three most effective pieces of advice that you could give us okay. tonight? Yeah. So,
Yeah. yeah. What, could, what are the three most effective uh, um, <coughs> advice um, hints that I can give tonight that, 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 that will help? From the point of view of keeping pre-diabetes and diabetes where it's avoidable, because I have to emphasize there are people where it's not avoidable, and that includes some type 2. Um, but of that 80% say of type 2, and those pre-diabetics that come into that 80%, which is avoidable, um, would be to try and attain those waistlines, which is difficult. Um, but the, the figures I gave out to you about 31 and a half and 36 and a half female, male and below. Number two is exercise. Again, I'm, I'm, I tend to repeat myself uh, frequently and, and a lot of you may have noticed that. Um, but uh, if you've come to see me, um, but do it or you lose it. Do it or you lose it. So exercise has lots of benefits. So it, it doesn't mean it has to be a form of walking around. Uh, it's any form of, of exercise involving the body in any way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and certainly those people who have arthritis actually at attending the um, uh, water aerobic type things, that, that, that undoubtedly, it's, it's relatively less effort, but if it means it's easier to do, then, then that, that would be absolutely fine. And the third thing? Uh, coming on to the third thing. <laughs> Sorry? Um, is, is appropriate diet. Um, so the, the, the issue of, of diet and, and, and the diet at the moment, the biggies are um, Mediterranean diet is, is a big one. Um, the, you will have heard of um, omega-3s, um, uh, massive, uh, we can't get away from that really. Um, good fats, there's no doubt that monosaturates, so olive oils uh, is very good, but if you, if you look at uh, uh, all the fats, if you have excessive fat, and, and some people do, um, that's not good for you. I, I have a fair amount of olive, olive oil, um, I tend not to have the polyunsaturated type nowadays, and I certainly avoid the saturated type. Saturated is the bad boy, um, and it, it is a big bad boy. Most of us have actually pulled back on that. But omega-3 fats, um, more difficult to get. Um, they they uh, fish, uh, um, a number of fish are the big east. Uh, mackerel is a very common one, uh, salmon, um, uh, tuna, more uh, fresh tuna as against tin tuna. Um, I'll take it then that, that, that um, no more questions on the diabetic front. But just amongst your friends, it's just something to talk about and, and perhaps lightheartedly. Uh, the amount, the one in three of adults, so you know, looking at the population we have at the time, and just talk about that if that one issue of, of, of the waistline. Um, because it's we, if we can avoid it, it's so much that's and it's possible to avoid it, let's do it.